Hi, I'm Linda, and today I wanted to talk to you about something which um, has been plaguing me for the last few days, and that is a pinched nerve in the shoulder blade area. So I can't actually isolate exactly where it is, but it's somewhere close to my right shoulder blade, and the pain runs up all the way into the right-hand side of my neck. It's actually a very common problem. A lot of people wake up and they've just slept wrong and then it's really difficult or painful to turn their neck like this. Or you might actually notice that when you're doing certain exercises, you feel it kind of go or there's a slight discomfort in there and it can sometimes get more painful. So today I want to talk to you about why you get pinched nerves also how to alleviate some of the pain if you do have one and lastly some exercises to help prevent getting them again in the future so let's start with number one why is it that we get pinched nerves so depending on your job my job i use my mouse a lot so a computer mouse and i'm right-handed so i noticed a while ago that my left shoulder is slightly higher than my right shoulder if you are one of those people that has a desk job or it might not even be a desk job it just might be something where you use your dominant arm repetitively for an ongoing period of time and I've been working with computers for the last 15 odd years so that's why I got mine what happens is the muscles that the postural muscles that hold your shoulders nice and upright and keep everything in place and make sure you're balanced those muscles tend to stretch so if you use the mouse in front of you all the time that arm is in an unnatural position and you actually start to slowly slowly stretch those muscles it can also be the way you're sitting if you're slouching and hunched forward slightly you will notice that your shoulders tend to round and once again if your arm is out in front then it is that whole action of doing it day in day out that you'll notice your posture getting worse and your shoulder muscles are slowly starting to stretch now when your shoulder muscles are not exactly in the right spot you are then more prone to injury so with me i've noticed that if i'm doing heavier weight exercises and i'm not using a hundred percent correct form or maybe even i'm trying to use a hundred percent correct form but for whatever reason um, it's a day where i'm a bit tired or there's muscle pre-muscle fatigue from another day's exercise whatever the reason i have noticed that every now and then i'll feel like a pinching in the back shoulder blade there and sometimes that just goes away overnight but other times like this last time unfortunately it developed from a little bit of discomfort into a whole lot of discomfort over the last three-day period to the point where i couldn't even hardly move and it was excruciating and i had to get medication to help me with it so depending on what level of discomfort you're able to tolerate you can sometimes just work around it and you might even still be able to exercise your lower body if your upper body is not doing too well but what i really wanted to find out is why was this happening quite regularly i mean not super regularly but once every say three to six months i was getting this pinched nerve thing um, and this time was the worst out of all of them so i decided i need to figure out what's going on so that i can stop this from happening all the time in the future so after doing some research i did note that for me it is the fact that i have my hand forward a lot using the mouse and then my muscles are stretched which means when i go to do those other heavier weight exercises the muscles are not as tight as they should be and they are more prone to injury so that's what happened i don't know exactly what exercise i was doing but i did remember feeling a bit of discomfort after one of my workouts last week and that kind of developed over the next couple of days into a full-blown pinched nerve and the reason why you know it's an actual nerve that's been pinched is because it's like a throbbing pain that kind of doesn't go away it's constant and it's really sore so there are some things you can do to help yourself out if you do have a pinched nerve i obviously went online straight away and googled every single remedy to pinched nerve 
Um, I didn't really want to go see a specialist about it because I have had it in the past and it has returned back to normal within a few days. Even though this one was a bit more painful, I thought if I just have a look at some of the remedies and try out a few myself, if it doesn't get any better, then I will go and see a specialist after a few days. But thank God, it's only been three days and it is a lot better today, even to the point where I was able to do some light exercise, not using my upper body, but I was able to exercise my lower body. So what did I do to help with pain management and to help it to heal more quickly? Number one, I knew that heat is always good for any sort of muscle pain. So I used a heat cream. This one is just one that we got from our local chemist, Goanna on the move. It's an Australian one, but you can use any deep heat, any of these creams that provide a, a really nice warm feeling on the muscle. One word of advice, do not put this on after you've had a hot bath or shower because it will burn like crazy. And yes, I did make that mistake and it was so bad. My husband massaged it in for me and it was literally like I was on fire. I had to get him to rub it off and then I put on the fan full strength to just put my back underneath the fan. And then after a few minutes or less than a minute, it went away. So it was fine. But just don't do that. If you've just had a shower, just wait for your body to cool down a bit. Don't put it on a hot skin. So you can use this or you can just use another cream to massage the area. So what, you, what happens is when you've got pain somewhere, all of your other muscles tend to contract and you're trying to protect that area. So you'll notice if it's in your shoulder blade, your trapezius muscles at the top there, everything starts to just clench up. So it's really good to get someone to massage that area just to loosen everything up again. And this will give you some temporary relief as well with that nice cooling sensation. So I got my husband not just to do like a vigorous massage, but to use finger, finger massage and really get into the, all of those points and crevices around the shoulder blade. And that seemed to really help and it did alleviate some of the pain as well. The other thing I did do was I tried paracetamol to begin with and it didn't really do a lot because this was major pain, not just like a headache. So um, we got some of this Voltaren Rapid uh, which is acute muscle and back pain relief. And they're just little capsules. You're supposed to take two initially and then one every eight hours. I ended up taking one every probably five hours because I couldn't wait, like, couldn't handle not having the pain relief uh, for the first day. And then I started doing it for uh, a longer, longer period in between for the next day. So I, once again, this might be an Australian product, Voltaren. Just go to your local pharmacy and ask for something that's for acute muscle and back pain relief. And these ones do wonders. So I took them. They were actually not drowsy. For me, I was able to still function and do my work and everything um, without falling asleep. But they got rid of the pain and it was uh, just so much more bearable after that. The one thing you need to be really careful of is when you're taking these painkillers, they mask the pain. So the issue is still there. So you do not want to, um, after taking them, think, oh, I'm healed and start doing things that will aggravate that area further because once the pain relief wears off, you're still gonna have the problem. So you're just using it to be able to manage the pain, but you still need to be really careful to not further aggravate the area and to give it time to heal. So obviously with the healing process, it means not using that muscle group to exercise which the first day, I must admit, I thought that it wasn't so bad and I didn't actually do any upper body work, but I did some spinning. And because you're up and on the handlebars, up and down, putting pressure on that area, I did make it a little bit worse doing the spinning. So if you can, don't do anything that uses your upper body at all. But on the other side, don't just sit there in a chair and do nothing because that actually makes the pain worse. I found that when you're out and about and you're mobile and you're moving slightly, not like waving your arms in the air, obviously, but you've got a little bit of movement, the pain was much less than if I just sat there in a chair. So the first couple of hours, because I was so in so much pain before I got these tablets, 
I kind of didn't move and I just sat there and I tried to just find a position where the pain was minimal and that was probably not the best because then when I got up from that position, it was excruciating. So I would suggest trying to go about doing light um, movement, nothing drastic, nothing where you're lifting anything, but just light movement, especially through the neck, trying to keep mobile, looking um, in different directions as long as it doesn't pull and hurt. So there's usually one direction that really hurts. Just don't do that. Just kind of, you know, just keep everything mobile, okay? Going along with the heat thing, having a hot bath is great. It really relaxes all of your muscles and again, will get that tension out of all of the supporting muscle groups that are clenching up. So that helped a lot. I had a hot bath. Um, keeping your neck warm. So I was wearing a scarf the whole time. I also didn't have one of those uh, heat bags, the, you know, the ones with the beans or rice or whatever inside. I had a hot water bottle, but that just did not cut it because it didn't bend and it was heavy with the water in it. So when I put it on there, it was actually more uncomfortable. So I improvised and I present to you my sock bean bag. So all this is, is one of my husband's big socks and I found some beans in the cupboard and I put them inside and tied a knot. So there you go, you don't need to go and buy an expensive bean bag. Um, I put this in the microwave for two minutes and it gets really nice and hot and then you can put it on the area that's affected and mold it to um, exactly where you want it and, um, and just keep using that because heat helps you to relax all of those muscles and it will also help just to make everything a bit more comfortable. So I've been using that even today. I still am using that. Um, today is a much better day. I actually got a good night's sleep last night and I only had to have one tablet early this morning and I haven't had any more the rest of today and it's now um, I think around 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. here in Australia, Perth, Western Australia. So that's what I used in terms of trying to make it a little bit more bearable. I also had a look at some exercises. Now, I'm not really 100% sure whether these helped a lot at the time because I was doing so many other things, but I think they do help you to get into a position where there's less pain. So the number one thing, if you want to get rid of pain straight away in that area is bring your hand up like this. So you can either just put your hand on your head or palm forward. And just having your hand up like this, somehow, I don't know why, it helps lift all of that up so there's less pressure, perhaps, on all of those nerves and things. So putting your hand up like this um, definitely helps. Another one is an exercise where it's the same sort of principle you bend your head, so it's obviously the side that you've got the pain on, you bend away and, and open like that. So you slowly allow the weight of your head to um, drop over to that side. Okay, so that is another exercise you can do. And I found that my traps were getting quite tight. So what they suggest is to stretch out your traps so if you want to actually sit, you might want to sit on your arm and then bend your head in the opposite direction. So you're just bending over and that helps you to stretch out this whole area here. Sitting on your arm is a really good idea because it stops your arm from coming up and then you just hold that stretch. It's even better to do this if you've just put some deep heat on or just had a bath or shower or used your heat pack because then this is all going to be a little bit more supple. So you can basically sit here for as long as you want to stretch that out. The other thing that I found was because for me it was a rounding forward issue that caused it in the first place, rounding back was really good. So I actually interlaced my fingers and just opened up through my shoulders. You don't even need to interlace, you just can maybe even hold on to a sofa or something and just push your chest up like this. So anything where your shoulders go backwards felt a lot better than if you've, you try to round forward. So don't, basically don't look down, try to keep your chin up. That for me worked a lot better. 
Uh, the other exercise that they suggested was if you lie on a sofa or a bed and then prop yourself up on your elbow, making sure that you've got your head in nice alignment and then just let your head hang over that shoulder. So you're letting the weight of your head drop down over that side. So once again, that is contracting that whole area and taking pressure off the nerves. And it's also your spine is helping to open up and everything that's pinched in there is got, has got more room to kind of move around and unpinch itself. So this is one exercise that they recommend. The last one, which um, I think did actually help a little bit. I'm going to take off my scarf so you can see better. Ah. I call it the retracting turtle. My husband called it the surprise turtle. So I guess it depends on what face you make, whether it's just a retracting turtle, like going into its shell or surprise. But basically what you do is you don't tuck your chin down, but it's like you tuck your head back. So it's not really the most attractive thing, but it's like you're trying to make a double chin and you hold your shoulders down and you, so I'll show you from the side. It's like, stick your head out slightly and then, see so like you're making a double chin there. Okay, so the retracting turtle. And if you make a surprised face like, then it's a surprised turtle. Okay, so that exercise is actually pretty good because once again, you are pushing your ears back over your shoulders and that's where they're supposed to be. So when you're looking at social media, when you're looking at your tablet, your computer, whatever, you tend to look down and you're rounding your spine and this is trying to oppose that action by pushing your head back. Okay, so that one I did notice helped. And apparently with the whole pinched nerve thing, it helps to unpinch it, okay? So I don't know all the technical terms, I don't know all the medical terms, all I know is that it kind of worked. Mm -hmm. So there you go, you've got your pain relief, you've got your muscle rubs, you've got your heat uh, in, in terms of scarves, in terms of showers, in terms of baths. Uh, you've got massage, get someone to massage it for you very gently, don't let them go overboard. You've got your exercises that you can do, those ones, keeping your arm up, retracting turtle, uh, the one where you lie on your side and put your head over. You've got all of those things that you can um, play with and they will help. Uh, try to get more sleep than usual. I got a good 10 hours sleep each night. Uh, the tablets do help you to sleep uh, through if you take them just before, but the first night I actually had to get up in the middle of the night and take another one because I was still quite in a lot of pain. So those are my suggestions to you. Now to the section where we talk about how to prevent this from happening in the first place. And that is going to be doing posture exercises. So I'm going to show you some exercises that you can do which will help you to strengthen all of those shoulder muscles again to make sure your shoulders are held back in place and so that you've got an upright posture so that when you are exercising and using heavier weights or even just body weight exercises, your muscles aren't stretched and they're not going to be more prone to injury. So let's move on with that. <laughs> 